Hi everyone, this week in Computer Science 340, we're gonna be talking about searching and sorting algorithms. Now you've probably looked at searching and sorting algorithms before, but this week we're going to be paying a special attention to the algorithm analysis aspect of this. So in this video, we'll be talking about searching algorithms. We'll look at two. First, the very simple linear search algorithm, which we'll go ahead and implement and then do the analysis on, but that one will be pretty straightforward. Then we'll look at binary search and we'll do binary search as a recursive algorithm. And then we'll go ahead and do the analysis on that, which is just a little bit more complicated. Then in the next video this week, we're going to be talking about sorting algorithms. So let's go ahead and start by talking about linear search. All right, so linear search is quite a simple algorithm. I'm sure it's one you've seen before, even if you maybe haven't seen it by this name. In linear search, you wanna search through some sequential data structure. It could be an array or an array list or a link list or whatever. And we are looking for a target item. And so let's say in this case, our target item is the 56. Then we would start at zero and we would check if this is the item we're looking for and it's not, so we carry on and carry on and carry on, going linearly through the thing until we find what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and jump into some code and see how this will work. So here I have a linear search.java file where we have a method called linear search and this method takes as parameters the array we wanna search through and the target thing we're looking through for. And in main, it calls it with a few different arguments. So to go ahead and implement this, of course, the first thing we're gonna need is a loop to go through each item. So we'll write this as a for loop that starts at zero and goes through the length of the array, array.length, and goes up by one each time, of course. Then inside this array, all we really have to do is check if the target is equal to this thing. So I'm gonna say if array at this i location is equal to the target, then we'll go ahead and print that we found it. There we go. And then we'll return true because we found the item. Otherwise, if we get to the end of this for loop, then at this point, what you might be tempted to do is say something like this, like return false, we didn't find it, and then close the for loop. Um, sometimes when writing loops like this, students will write it this way, and that will not work, right? Because we are looping through the items from one to n, and we can't decide right away after the first iteration if we found it or not. So if we leave this return false in here, it's only ever gonna get to the first item. If the first item is the one we're looking for, it'll return true. Otherwise, it'll return false right away. We'll have to put this outside of the for loop, oops, too far, right here, right? So that after the whole for loop is done and we've searched all the items, then we can return false. I'll put a little message right here. If you were doing this for real, we would probably like return the whole object that's being stored in the array or something like that. But for now, I'll just print that the thing wasn't found. So I'll say target was not found like that. And also just so we can see to make sure that we understand how this is working, I'll print that we're searching at the ith position in here like that. So now we can go ahead and run this program and it should say that it finds 13 in slot two and that it finds 99 almost at the end of the array. I'm not sure what slot that is. And 40, I don't think is in here. And so it'll print that 40 wasn't found. So now we're ready to run this and we can see that our linear search does seem to be working. It found the 13 in slot two. It found the 99 almost at the end in slot 22 and it searched all of the slots before it could conclude that 40 wasn't found. So this is a pretty simple algorithm. I don't think this would be one that you would struggle with, but it's nice to have a baseline before we start talking about binary search. So let's look at the analysis for linear search first. All right, what is the big O of this algorithm? Well, we have the situation where we are looping through this array. And first of all, we should decide what our n is. In this case, I think it will hopefully be clear that n is the length of the array. The bigger the array is, the more time it'll take to search through for the thing we're looking for. And as we search through, we're doing a constant amount of work. If we look at the code, we'll see that inside of this for loop, this is a constant amount of work in here. We're not looping inside of this or anything. We're just checking if this is the thing. And if so, we do something. If not, we just move on. So this loop goes n times and inside of it, it does a constant amount of work. And again, we have the sort of thing to think about where the 
loop might end before it goes through all n items, right? It might end right away pretty much. Like if we're looking in this array for two or seven, it's not gonna loop through the whole thing. But we have to consider that on average, it'll probably loop about halfway before it finds the thing we're looking for. And so we would have something like one half times n, which is just big O of n. Hopefully that makes sense. It even in the name has linear. This is a linear time algorithm. As the array grows, it takes more and more time to search through, but it just takes a linear amount of time. All right, we won't spend any more time on linear search. Hopefully linear search makes sense. I think that's a should be a pretty simple algorithm for y'all at this point. Binary search, on the other hand, we're gonna spend a little more time with. So let's look at binary search now. All right, so in the binary search algorithm, the first thing we need to talk about is that it will only work if the array is in sorted order like this. These numbers are in order from smallest to biggest. As we'll see, if it's not in sorted order, this is not gonna work at all. So the way that binary search works is we don't begin looking in the beginning of the array. Instead, we actually begin looking in the middle of the array. And so this array has 15 items, and so seven is right in the middle. And so that's where we're actually gonna begin the search. And I guess we need to know what thing we're looking for. So the target we'll say is equal to 22. 22 is the one we're looking for. And so we begin looking at 42 right in the middle here. And then we compare 42, the one in this cell, to 22. And we don't just check if it's the thing we're looking for or not. We do check that. We say, is this the thing we're looking for? And if so, we're done. But we don't just compare it for equality. We also compare to see if it's less than or greater than. And if it's the one in this middle slot here is less than the one we're looking for, then we know that the one we're looking for has to be to the right of this because they're in sorted order. On the other hand, as is the case right now, if the thing that we're looking for is less than the thing that's in the middle slot, we know it has to be in the left half. And so we're going to just eliminate this entire right half of the array, including the one we're looking at right here. And that's why it needs to be in sorted order for this to work, because if it is in sorted order and 22 is less than 42, 22 has got to be over here on the left side. Then we iterate this algorithm again, and we look at the portion of the array that we have remaining. And again, we don't start looking in the beginning. Instead, we go to the middle again, which in this case, it looks like would be index three, the 16. And then we compare to see if this 16 is less than or greater than or equal to the 22. If it's equal to the thing we're looking for, of course, we're done. If it's greater than the thing we're looking for, then we're going to cross off the right half of the array. But in this case, 16 is actually less than the thing we're looking for. Our target is bigger than 16, so it has to be on the right side. And so now we cross off the half of the array that is remaining, including the one we're looking at. And so all of this has been eliminated. Then we again search in the remaining portion of the array. And again, we search in the middle of it, which in this case is going to be right here, the 29. And we'll see that 29 is bigger than the thing we're looking for, 22. So we eliminate not only the 29, but the ever, whatever is left to the right of it, which is these two cells. And then we got a little bit unlucky in this case, but we finally, when we've narrowed down the entire array, we are finally able to look in the middle of whatever's remaining, which is only one item, and see that this is equal to the thing we're looking for. And so we found our target and can complete the search. So the reason that this is more efficient than linear search is because with binary search, we're not going to have to look at the entire array, no matter how unlucky we are. This is actually the worst case scenario for binary search where we didn't find what we're looking for until we've narrowed it down to be only that one cell. So with binary search, we cut the array basically in half right off the beginning and either way, eliminate one half or the other. And then we do it again and again and again, throwing away half the array from the possible search space with every iteration. Let's think about how we could do this actually in code. Okay, I drew a new array because I had scribbled all over the original one. And so we're gonna have some variables here. The one thing we have that we had before is target. We need to keep track of what is the item that we're actually looking for. We also need to keep track of where in the array our possible search space is. What is the smallest item it could be and what is the biggest item it could be? Because when we look in the middle and throw away the right half, we need to keep track of, okay, now 
where is the smallest item it could be, which in this case would be two, and then where's the biggest item it could be, which is now 42. We're going to use these indices to keep track of where our search space is. So I will call them left and right. Now left is gonna start off being equal to zero, and right is going to start off, in this case, being equal to 14, our length of the array minus one. Then we're also going to keep track of a variable called middle. And middle, we're going to set equal to the average, essentially, of the left and the right. That will let us decide halfway between the left and the right value. So we'll do something like this. We'll set middle equal to left plus right divided by two. That will bisect this range essentially and in this case 0 plus 14 is of course 14 and then half of that is 7 that will give us right in the middle then in our code what we're going to do is we're going to say something like this we're going to say if the array in the middle location if that's equal to our target then obviously we're done and we can just return true or return the item or whatever it is that we're doing in this Otherwise, we're going to keep on checking it, and I'm going to say else if the array at this middle point, if that is less than our target value, well, what that means is that the thing over here is less than our target, so our target in that case would have been greater than 56, and so that's where we're going to throw away the whole left half of the array. So we're going to do that basically by making another recursive call, and we're going to be recursively searching only the right half of the array, this portion over here. And so I'm gonna say something like, return the binary search, BS stands for binary search, nothing else, and we're still looking for the same target, and we're still looking in the same array, but now our left value isn't going to be zero anymore over here. Instead, it's going to be now the left index of the new array that we're looking inside of, which is going to be our middle plus one, right? Because this is our middle point. Now we're going to be looking at middle plus one as the left side, and we're gonna keep the right side the same. So that will cause us to recursively search only this subrange here. Otherwise, what must have happened is the one here is bigger than the one we're looking for, in which case we need to search this subrange, the left portion of the array. And so to do that, I'm going to recursively call ourselves again, this time with the same target again, of course, and this time with the same left value. Our left value didn't change in that case. We're still starting over here, but now our right value is middle minus one, one to the left of where we were. That's the basic idea behind this recursive algorithm. We're recursively searching on smaller and smaller portions of the array as we sort of drill down into where we're looking and then eventually find it. So let's go ahead and implement that idea in our program. All right, and again, I have a little skeleton program here in binarysearch.java. Our main makes an array of numbers and they are in sorted order, which again is totally necessary when we're doing binary search. And then again, we search for some numbers. We search, I think the same ones as last time, 13, 99, and 40. Then I actually made two little methods up here. The first is called binary search, and it takes the array we're searching for and our target. And then all this one does is it calls this method up here. Sometimes that's necessary when you're dealing with recursion because in the recursive algorithm here, we need to keep track of where is the left point and where is the right point for our search. But we don't want the user to have to call that. So the whole point of this little method right here is to basically just fill in the starting values. So we call the real binary search method with zero for left and the length minus one for right just to kick things off. This is the real actual method that's gonna be recursive and do the all, all the actual work. So the first thing we need to do is find our middle point. I'll say int middle is equal to, like I said, the left plus the right divided by two. And now this is going to round down in Java integer division, which is okay. In the example we had so far, that didn't happen, but let's look at one where it does. 
Okay, in this scenario, oops, wait, this is still a uh, odd length array. Let me make it even. Okay, there we go. Now we have eight items. And so this isn't going to have one perfectly in the middle anymore. So when we do our initial calculation, our left is equal to zero and our right is equal to seven. And so when we calculate the middle, it'll be zero plus seven, which is seven, divided by two, which is really three and a half, but in Java, it's three. And so this is going to serve to round down the middle. And it doesn't really matter. We could round up instead and it won't really affect anything. It's not really a problem for our left and right halves to be slightly unequal. We'll do the same thing as before. We'll check if 21 is too big or too small and we'll just search either these three items or these four items. The algorithm will work out the same either way. So that won't really be a problem. The next thing we need to do in this is check if the array at this middle location is in fact equal to the target item we're searching for. In that case, we will have found the thing. And so I'll print out a message to that effect like that and then also return true out of here. And now potentially if you were doing this in an actual program, you would have the array contain like student records or something like that. And your binary search would just go off and compare like the ID or something like that. And so based on the ID, you would return the whole student record. So, you know, that's, that's a thing you could do. But in this case, we'll just return true just because we're really concerned about just the core searching algorithm itself. Then we need to carry on and do our other checks. So I'm going to say else if the array at this middle location is less than the target item, then we're going to go ahead and do our recursion. Then we're going to recursively call ourselves and return whatever the result of binary searching to the right is. Because remember, we are finding that our target was bigger than the middle, so we need to binary search on the right. So I'm going to recursively call ourselves. The array isn't changing. The target isn't changing. But now the left is going to be middle plus one, like we talked about, and the right will be the same. And so we're using recursion to go ahead and call ourselves again, but only searching in the right half of the array. Then we can do like an else if check to see like if it was greater. But in fact, if the thing in the middle isn't equal to the target and it's not less than the target, it's got to be greater than the target. So there's really not much point in doing that check. We can just assume that will be the case. So I'll go ahead and return the recursive binary search on the left, which will be like this. We call binary search again ourselves recursively. The array isn't changed. The target isn't changed. Now the left hasn't changed, but the right value is equal to middle minus one. And now also we're going to go ahead and put in some little print statements so that we can see as it's working. There we go, just like that so we can see what's happening. And I'm going to go ahead and comment out this line of code for now because we haven't really dealt with the problem of what do we do when the thing isn't found. But I think it should work for these other two cases where the numbers 13 and 99 are actually in here. Let's compile and run this and see what happens. All right, we will run this and see that we found both items in the correct slots. Now we had fewer than we did before. If you remember when we did the linear search, it took more time to find these items, it took several chances uh, to find slot, uh, the number 13 pretty quickly, but the one to find 99 took quite a lot longer. And now with binary search, we find both of them relatively quickly. Let's see what happens when we search for an item that isn't there, however. If I uncomment this line of code where we're searching for 40, 40 is not in this list. So let's see what happens when we run it now. All right, let's run it now when we're searching for 40. And we have a problem. This looks very familiar like the Stack Overflow exception. And in fact, that's the case. If we look, it was searching at six forever. Six, I think, was the index where 40 should have been at, been at but it never found it. Let's see if that's the case. Yeah, here's slot zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. It thinks that it should have been here if it was going to be here, and I think that's the case. And so we didn't account for this. We don't have any sort of base case for the thing not actually being in the array. So let's think about that. Let's go back to the whiteboard and think about what our base case might be.
All right, so let's go through this with a target that's not found in the array. So let's say our target would be like, uh, I don't know, 12. Well, the way we have it right now, left would be at zero, of course, and then right would be over here at seven. And we would pick as our middle item, like we talked about, 21. We would then see that 21 is bigger than 12. So left is going to stay the same, but right is going to move over here to slot two like that. And then we're going to compute the new middle, which of course is going to be right between left and right in slot one. Well, we're then going to find that six is less than the one we're looking for, our target of 12. So we're going to keep right the same and we're going to move left to be middle plus one. So it'll look like this with left and right now both being equal to two. Well, we'll check if the target is equal to what's in slot two or not. And in fact, it's not. This thing in the middle here is bigger. Well, I guess I should first of all say that when we try to figure out what the middle is, we're gonna do left plus right divided by two, which is gonna be equal to two itself. And so our middle is also going to be set equal to slot two. Then we check if the thing in the middle, which is 15, is bigger than or less than what we're looking for, 12, and we'll find that it's bigger. So we're going to search on the left half of this range. So we're going to leave left the same, and we're going to move right equal to middle minus one. So now right is going to be over here instead of where it was previously. So now we've kind of introduced something that's clearly not right here in our algorithm. When right is now to the left of left, something clearly went wrong. And if you think about it, what we've done is we've narrowed down our search so far that our right and left indicators have passed each other up. So now our search space now contains less than one things in it. And so at that point, we can conclude that the thing that we're looking for, whatever it is, is not here. So our base case can say something like this. It can say, if left gets to be bigger than right, when we start the search, then we can return false because then we know that this thing will not have been found inside of here. So let's add that to the code and see if that fixes our base case problem. So in the method at the very top of it, now I'm going to add this case in. I'm going to say, if left is bigger than right, then we know that it wasn't found. So I'll put in a print message to that effect like that, and then also return false from this method because we know that it is not here. So let's compile and run this with the 40 and see if this fixes the problem where it would just be doing infinite recursion. Now we should catch that case and at least return false and say it's not there. All right, so let's run it again. And now we see that it searched 11, 5, 8, 6, 7, and it has therefore searched this entire range because it, it, it narrowed it down all the way to where 40 should be. But at that point, we concluded that 40 wasn't found when our search space went below one and there was no numbers anymore that it could have legitimately found the thing at. So that's our base case. Let's look back at the method real quick. So that's the binary search algorithm. This is an algorithm that I think works just about as well, whether you do it with iteration, a loop, or with recursion. I thought we'd do it with recursion because we've just seen it. Let's turn now towards the analysis of this algorithm. All right. So binary search, we've seen that it's more efficient than linear search, and hopefully that intuitively makes sense. But now we're going to actually go ahead and do the analysis for this. So with binary search, the key thing is that you cut your search space in half every time. So if we're looking through 100 numbers, let's think about how many searches we might have to do. Well, when we do the first search, we have narrowed the search space down to 50. So when we have done the first pass of this algorithm, we've cut out half of the array. And so instead of 100 items to search, we have 50 left. After the next iteration, we'll have 25 by the same logic because we're cutting it in half. And now after the next one, half of 25 is 12.5, but I'll round down because of that middle item, right? So it sort of comes out in the wash. Then when we go from 12 with our next iteration, it'll take us down to six and then three and then one and then zero. And so at that point, we'll either have found the item or we'll know that it wasn't there because we'll hit our base case of having the left be bigger than the right. So how many searches was that? Well, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven searches. 
Let's think about if we have a bigger number now. Let's say we had instead a thousand different items in our array, how much time would it take? Well, let's do the cutting in half thing again. We would go to 500, 250, 125, 62, 31, 15, the numbers are a little bit harder to divide, seven, uh, then three, and then one, and then zero. So even though I increased the size of the array by a factor of 10, it's 10 times bigger, it didn't take 10 times longer to search. Right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 searches. And so if we look at this sort of as steps as a function of n, we would find that it's the number of times you can cut n in half before you hit zero. And it turns out that there's actually a mathematical concept that matches this exactly, which is the logarithm base two of n. The logarithm base two of n is the opposite of the exponent two to the n. Those are inverse operations, two to the n versus exponent of n. So if we look at this the other way around, we can say that two raised to the number of steps we have to take is equal to our n, which is kind of true here. Two to the seven equals 128. So if we are allowing ourselves to take seven steps of binary search, we can get up to n is equal to 128 and two to the 10 is equal to 1024. And so if we allow ourselves to do 10 steps of the binary search algorithm, we can get up to 1024 items in our array. So we've seen last week things like Fibonacci numbers and the uh, towers of Hanoi grow as big O of two to the N, which is really, really horrible. It grows like exponentially fast. Well, this algorithm is the big O of log of N log base two of n, and this essentially grows exponentially slowly. The exponent is the other way around. So the more steps we do, we can search an exponentially bigger array, if you wanna think of it like that. And there's one last sort of thing to talk about, which is that we can drop this to here, which is uh, sort of based on the change of base formula. If you want a proof of this, you can look it up. Um, I don't uh, think we need to go into it right now. But the two here is essentially the same thing as a constant factor, and so that can be dropped. And so the binary search algorithm is big O of log of n. And so on the notes page here, we have a little comparison between the big O of n linear search and the big O of log n binary search with the max number of guesses. So if we have 10 items, linear search, we might have to guess all 10. We might have to look at all 10 items. Binary search, only four. As we increase this, it gets more and more dramatic with a thousand, hundred thousand items with linear search, of course, a hundred thousand potential array slots we have to check with binary search only 17 with a million, it's only 20 and with a billion, it's only 30. So this is an incredibly efficient algorithm and it takes basically no time at all to search a billion size array, whereas linear search might have to look at all 1 billion cells. So these big O of log n algorithms are really very, very efficient and fantastic when you can find them. It's almost as good as constant time because it grows just exponentially slowly if you wanna think of it that way. All right, so that's all in searching algorithms. We looked at binary search in some detail, mainly because it's another good example of recursion and also the analysis for it was kind of interesting. And this is the first time we've seen and really talked about at least a log n algorithm, which is pretty cool. So that's all for today. In the next video in this week, we're going to be talking about sorting algorithms. So I'll see you for that.